control. My praise is a weapon. It's more than a sound. My praise is the shout that brings Jericho down. You ready? As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to pray. as we enter into worship let's all bow our heads raise our voices lift our hands unto him and surrender it all because he is our God he sees our pain he sees what we are going through let's all just surrender it right now we praise you Father we glorify your name Let's all lift our hands this morning and worship Him and praise Him. Hallelujah. Thank you. We praise you. We glorify your name.
Surrender it all, surrender it all. Let's sing it one more time. I surrender.
Doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I'm going through a storm.
great to be in the house of the Lord today, knowing our lives are being changed, knowing that the bounds, the chains that once were there are being broken because of our God and our King. Well, good evening again, church family. Good evening to those who are online and those who are here for the first time. We are so happy that you are here with us. Would you greet the, to the person next to you? Just say it's great seeing you here. And isn't it great to be in the house of the Lord as you can take your seats. A few announcements real quick. Uh, firstly, our very own Pastor David from, uh, for one day, is doing a teaching from the book of Philemon, calling it Prisoners and Free Men. And this is where only 50 people can come. This is going to be at Bethany on the third floor from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. on November 11th. Pastor David does a great job teaching, and I encourage you, be part of this. If you've been wanting to know more about the Word of God, come and hear this teaching from this wonderful book that can change the lives of people. As well probably know it's a little different. Our teens are actually sitting in the very front row because our teens just came with Fearless from our camp, Ignite, where 20 of the teens came and it was a powerful and wonderful time. And even just to, just to think, how many times have you tried to get the teens just to come to sit in the church and yet here they are right in the front row? All praise to God. 
We know. And we're so proud of them and all that is God is doing and what God will continue to do in their lives. As well, for those that are in love and care ministry, which are those who are 60 and above, I encourage you, please do not rush yourself out after the service. There is a quick meeting for you in the sun, where the Sunday school uh, where is being held right next door. Just right after the service, quickly go there. There's just a little meeting that they want to have. And it will be a wonderful time that you will want to be part of. But with that, I want to ask our ushering team if you could come forward as we uh, sow into the kingdom of God. So shall we rise up with our offering in our hands? And as we pray, I also want you to lift your voice to God. You know that we are believing that by the end of this year, we are going to see 1,500 new people. That we're going to see 500 new families. And this is going to happen. We are going to see it come through. So as we pray for the offering, let us pray for this as well. For those 1,500 newcomers and 500 families that are going to be coming this year. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. This day where we're able just to be in your presence. To let us touch our hearts. To let us come closer to you. That we are not going to be the same people that we once were. That when we leave this place, we will be able to say, it was great to be in the house of the Lord because we had an encounter with our God. And Lord, we pray for the 1,500 people that are going to be coming, Lord. The 500 new families, Lord, that they will be drawn into your service, that they'll be drawn into hearing about you, Lord, wanting to be in your presence, wanting to be touched by you. For when you come, lives are transformed, lives are changed because they are encountering the living and true God. And we thank you for all this, Father. As we pray for the offering as well, as we sow into your kingdom, that it be used for the advancement of your kingdom throughout this land. Be blessed and multiplied. That people who are in need, you will be touched. In the mighty and precious name we pray. Amen and amen. We give you honor, Lord, for who you are. All right, heaven, once again, a blessed morning to you. Do me a favor, turn to your neighbor and tell them whatever you feel like. Heaven, normally we'll tell you what to say, but tell whatever you feel. So you can tell them anything this morning. Whatever you, you're nice, you're ugly, you're kind, you're bad, or you need to give me a rupee, you need to, you know, whatever you, just tell whatever you want. It's okay, you can tell them whatever you want this morning. Tell you what has been a, a very eventful week, so many great things taking place. And like Pastor Bobby said, uh, one of the highlights for us as the English congregation was that fearless, that's our teens ministry. They're on camp. Want to say thank you to Nilakshi and Baba Niro for leading this uh, fantastic bunch of young people. Uh, they're not future leaders. In fact, actually, they are. I feel leading even right now. I walked in last uh, morning around 11.15 for this, to speak at the camp and with Pastor Luke. And the moment I went in, uh, some of the boys saw my hand. And the first thing they said was, Pastor, we want to pray for you. I love that. Pastor, we want to pray for you. And that began to speak to me about the faith level of the young boys and girls there. They said, we, let can we pray for you? We will pray for you. Now, that's a very interesting sign in a day and age like this, where many people would begin to give various other answers. They said, we will pray for you. And that really inspired me. So I want to say, teens, we are so proud of you and we love you. I want to say thank you to all the church who continues to support in the vision 
to carry forward the mission of god so nilakshi what we like to do is to give a few people an opportunity to share a testimony or two we would like for everybody but uh, as a result of time we'll just invite a few people but uh, i'm going to invite uh, <coughs> how do you pronounce it geshan geshan uh, jaden and shanali to come in while they come i want to put your hands together and give these kids a great great clap these are great boys and great girls with great right so welcome so happy for all of you now that the three of you are here we also going to ask you all do a special dance as well at the end of it okay uh, how many of you like to see the three of them dance let me see your hands these are fantastic dances okay so we'll also get them to do that that's okay nilakshi okay good so that was a part of the plan okay who have you sent to the front they also going to sing a song or do a dance or something like that uh, son share with us philo Uh, before you went were you honestly excited to go or was it oh, i don't want to go they are really bugging me i have to go no choice if i don't go not nice and how was it all about tell us a little bit so to be honest i was first trying to make some excuses to go on saturday because there was a cricket match happening on friday with the all so <laughs> <laughs> i wanted to go on saturday but when i went on friday i was a bit nervous because i've been see, i haven't seen anyone and i met a lot of people for the first time but when i got to know them with fellowship dance singing praying i bonded with them and what camp what the, the experience i had in camp was i got to know about god I got to grow in God and I heard a few stories that touched my heart and what those stories taught me about was don't wait for the last minute because when you wait for the last minute and you don't do something you're going to regret it and you're going to have that guilt at the back of your head another experience i experienced at camp was pastor chan your prayer when he came and prayed over me i think i'm ready to grow in jesus and ready to accept him in my life amen thank you wow wow daughter share with us camp your experience what do you want to tell us uh so last day i couldn't go for camp so when i found out that camp was happening this year i was really excited and i really wanted to go so i'm really happy i went and uh, it was really fun and i really want to thank nikki akki and niroaya and the team who organized this camp it was really fun and i really felt god's presence what was one of the highlights for you is there anything something that you would like to say i experienced this or that happened god spoke to me or was there a, a prompting for you to make any decisions or anything uh so pastor when you came and spoke to us uh about zacchaeus story um you said that uh, there was a crowd who came to see jesus and then zacchaeus couldn't see jesus so he came uh, so he climbed up the tree to see him and uh he uh, in the bible it states that zacchaeus was the only one who actually got to speak to jesus and no one else in the crowd really got to speak to jesus because he wanted to see jesus so uh, what i learned was that when you um, go for like any camp or religious activities that you that when you focus on god when you uh, when you really want to learn about god that's when god can speak to you because if you don't focus on him he won't he won't speak to you so yeah that's yeah good one i think for all of us in the auditorium the story of zacchaeus is such a powerful story where many came to see jesus for whatever reason and i say this very carefully many came to see jesus but in the whole story sunnet only jesus saw one person 
And many came to see Jesus, but in the whole story, only Jesus saw one person, and his name was Zacchaeus. We ought to ask the question, everybody came to see Jesus, but only Jesus saw one person. What was the difference? I believe the difference was the heart, the attitude of Zacchaeus. You can come to church, but if you want Jesus to see you while you're seated here, you need to portray the attitude of Zacchaeus. Jesus, I am here to see you. So I think that's so important for all of us as well. I mean, uh, reminding us, you know, sometimes we go for services, we go for meetings, but it's not about do I see Jesus? The question is, does Jesus also see me? Son, share with us your story. Tell us a little bit, how long have you been coming to Bethany and etc.? Hello, everyone. Uh, my voice is gone because camp was really fun and then we stream and all, so it's a bit off now. So my name is Geshan. I'm also known as the guy with the hair pin on my ear. <laughs> so I'm new to Bethany. And then shout out to my friend, uh, Andrew. He was the one that invited me. It's like two, two months now since I started coming. So ever since I started coming, I mean, uh, my life changed. I was a mess and then I started coming here and then I didn't believe in anything. So now <laughs> I have faith, thanks to Jesus. He led me here, spoke to me through Andrew and Pastor Dishan was there to guide me and all the other pastors there. And uh, yeah, so camp was fun. Uh, so uh, people who didn't make it to camp, like uh, I, I want you all to come to the next camp because camp was really fun. Like the parents who didn't send their kids, like I'm telling you all, just send them. Because uh, camp was all about like making friends because I didn't know any of these guys. I was new to the whole church thing. And then I met them. I wasn't close to them. But yesterday we, we became brothers and sisters. Right, guys? Amen. So it was really fun. So I want the parents to send their kids because uh, we are going to like have more events in Fearless uh, from tomorrow onwards, <laughs> like the next week. So just send them, and uh, it's fun. So, yeah. Son, share with us, Silo. How did camp change your life? Has also coming to church changed your life, and in what areas? If it has changed, would you like to share it with us? So um, I, I, was, uh, I was confused, like, what I want to do with my life. So, like, the first day I walked into church, like, they, they ask, like, uh, whoever that doesn't know their self, like, who want to figure out their self, like, come in, we'll pray for you. And then something inside me just said, said like, go, go, let's do this. Like, and then I stood up, and Pastor Rosemary and came and prayed to me. So, um, from there onwards, I had a little faith, like, a little spark. And then, like, that made me want to, like, come every day. And then, like, figure out who's this Jesus. Like, I was so, I didn't know what it was. So... And then, um, so I, my friend Andrew, we, we like had a conversation saying, bro, I'm gonna like, uh, we, we, are, we made a deal. Like if I, I'll start believing in Jesus, if he can change my life. So I was, every hour was mess. Like I didn't know I was doing what I was doing and all. So we made a list that I shouldn't do. And I started reading the Bible. And he said, the Holy Spirit in me will get strong every day if I pray and all. So I said, okay, well, I'm gonna do it for a week. And then it's been two months since I'm sober and all, so I don't do any of those things anymore. Amen. So Come on, give the Lord a great clap. Listen to the young man speaking. And uh, yeah, so I want like, um, now it's my mission to help everyone out there like me that I was before. So it changed my life. No, he, Jesus is a way maker, guys. Like, Amen. come on. He, he's good. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> Amen. Oh, good. Nikki, see them on the preachers you're having here. You want to say something, son? Go ahead, go ahead. Before we get off stage, I would like to give a big, big thank you to the organizing committee, the leaders, the organizing camp, Nikiaki, Niraya, Inoshan. Without y'all's organization, I don't think camp would have been a success and we would have enjoyed this much. Once again, a big, big, big thank you. Thank you. Amen. Just what I just want to say, we love you. Team, I, I want to stand up, church, together with me. Just want to enter into a little bit of worship. Listen, listening to these voices. The words, the voices of these young people. Maybe you're here this beautiful morning and your life is a mess. Maybe you are here and you know somebody that you love is in a mess.
as you hear these stories, I believe hope comes, faith comes. Then Gershon was telling us that he's standing today and testifying because a friend named Andrew said, Gershon, come. Maybe there is some of you in this room that God is speaking to you to speak to somebody about Jesus. About Jesus. And maybe for some reason you have been postponing, delaying. But maybe this morning there's a conviction coming upon you saying, you know what? I will start speaking about Jesus. So many things could be happening right now in this room. I'm asking you to please close your eyes together with me and if only possible, if possible to lift up your hands. This morning we had a great service. Hundreds of people kneeling down and pouring their heart to Jesus this morning. Here we are. Another extension of that service, I believe. Father, we want to thank you this morning that you are here this morning. That you are here in every prayer. You are seeing every tear. You see every confusion, every brokenness. And we thank you in the name of Jesus that you have an answer for every one of us give you the glory. Now as the worship team begins to lead us into a bit of worship, let's get together. Let's begin to draw closer and closer and deeper and deeper with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are here Oh, in a man yeah. I worship you Lord, I worship you I worship you
let's be seated for a few minutes. Say thank you, worship team. Once again, a blessed morning to all of you. I want to share something with you this morning. Last morning, when as we were preparing to go for camp, I woke up with this thought. And the thought was that the devil really doesn't mind anybody becoming rich, anybody become famous, anybody becoming powerful. Actually, the devil really does not mind. I want to think what I'm saying. The devil is not against people getting rich, getting powerful, getting famous. The devil is not against that. But the devil for sure is against those who wants to get rich, who wants to become famous, who wants to become powerful sunnet, who has values in life, who has standards in life, holiness in life, righteousness in life, good character, and the devil doesn't want these people to become rich, famous, and powerful. The devil really doesn't imagine anybody becoming rich, famous, and powerful. But the devil for surely minds supun those who are honest, holy, faithful. The devil doesn't want them to hit that place. You know why? What are people attracted to in our society? Have you ever asked the question? Actually, what are people attracted to in our society? What are you attracted to? And the answer might be very simple. People are attracted to power. People are attracted to money. People are attracted to fame. People are attracted to success. People like that. So if the devil can make people successful in all of those areas, those people become an attraction in our society. And people want to become like that. So if the devil is going to support people to become, but the devil is going to be against the people of God. But the good news is, even though he's against, he can't stop. Because the truth of the matter is, God is greater. But I want you to know that God wants you to become rich. God wants you to become famous. God wants you to become influential. God wants you to become powerful. Because that's one of the ways that people are going to be attracted. And so even as I'm speaking to you, I want you to know if somebody's having the question, does God want me to do well in life? Absolutely, He wants you to do well in life. In every area of life, is God committed to help me to do well? Absolutely, he's committed. Will God help me? Absolutely, he will help you. All that you and I need to do is get to know what he has told us, obey what he has told us, walk in faith every day, and the rest will be history. This morning we had four people sharing their stories with us at the singular service and they were amazing stories. Amazing stories. One boy, a druggie, messed up life. But he comes to the Lord, Pastor Dilani, and guess what today? Entire life has turned around. Fruitful and successful in every area of life. The Lord has promoted him. He's a manager of a company and doing really well married uh, he was saying that for the age of 19 he remembers his parents have told him they shifted 18 times 19 years but they changed houses 18 times then when he came to the Lord one of the things he told the Lord is if possible would you bless me with a, a small house and what he has his own house. There's another girl who shared a testimony. And I'll tell you what, just brilliant stories this morning. Just hearing what God has done in their lives. You know why? Because they made decisions to do what God has asked of them in their lives. 
you can have and experience all that God has promised you if you begin to start doing the simple things that God has asked you to do. So keeping that in mind, I want to speak on a subject called Invitations Bring Opportunities. Life is filled with invitations. I want to take note of it. Life is filled with invitations. We as individuals, think about this. We give invitations. We receive invitations. And on daily, we are responding to invitations. Every invitation, there is an opportunity. And when you study the life of Jesus, when you study the life of the scripture, you begin to see that the scripture is loaded with invitations. Your and my life is also a product of the invitations we gave, the invitations we received, and how we responded to them. For example, Sunetha and Lushanti, how many years have you been married? 15? Se six, 17? 17 years. 16 years. Okay, 16 years. The only reason you are married, why are you married? Because I saw a photograph very recently. Uh, Sunet was on his knees. I saw that. Uh, Sunet was on his knees and basically saying, Hey, hey I'm extending the invitation. I would love to spend the rest of my life with you. And Lushanti, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. You will not get a better man like this. Yeah. You did the right thing, I'm telling you. By saying yes to him. You see, 16 years later, Lushanti, you will testify. Your life, Sunet, you will testify your life is also better. Why? Because you responded in the right manner to the right invitation. I was recently speaking and I was uh, basically uh, very happy and Manju excited and I was saying, you know what, I'm married 23 years and I was boasting a little bit about it, how good God has been and suddenly a gentleman stood up and he said, I want you to know I've been married 40 years I, mean, I, I was so happy. So Brother Peter, I, I went to shake his hand. He said, I've been married for 40 years. So when I went to shake his hand, he, but he said, I've been married four times. I quickly took my hand. So correct what he said, he'd been married 40 years, but four times. I said, how many more years do you have left to live? He said, I plan to live for another about 40 years. I said, praise God. But you know, because you responded well. That is why you are in that place. This is how life is. So as I begin to share with you, I want to begin to take note of some of these things. Number one is, some people live in a place called disappointment and regret because they did not respond well. I met so many people who live in the place called disappointment and regret. You know why? Because they did not respond well. Even this morning as the service would come to an end, there will be a time where I will extend an invitation on behalf of Jesus. I will extend an invitation. These young boys and girls from Fearless, what do you do? Twenty of you responded to an invitation. And as a result of it, you have great stories to tell. Why? Because you responded right. You made friends. I like our young man who was sharing. I, I don't know how many of you took note. I was always wondering, Brother Peter, why on earth is this fellow wearing a big baby nappy on his ear? How many of you re remember that, you know? Because usually only you wear those size of pins with the baby nappies. I don't know where you got it, but you know, those are baby nappies, son, okay? Baby nappy pins. So next time somebody's wearing that, don't forget, just remind them. It's a nice pin, but it's a baby nappy pin. It's about so big. But listen to his story. If I say, you said, you used about two months sober. You used something like that. Two months sober. Think of it. That means he was controlled by something else for many years. 
for many years. But he said, now for two months, I've been sober. Confused. I'm no longer confused. Why? Because he responded right to the invitation. But there are people here, people will be watching. You are living in the place called disappointment and regret. Now what do you do? You can choose to live with disappointment and regret. And guess what's going to happen? Nothing is going to happen. But you have an opportunity called today to do a thing or two about it. Number two is under that I said, some live in regret because they accepted and wasted the opportunity. I've seen this in life. Some would say, yes, I will go and work. I'll take this job. But they get the opportunity. They mess up. And their entire life, they begin to regret. I speak into a, about in his late 20s or early 30s, this guy. And I said, hey, tell me something about your life. Pastor Trevin, he said, my biggest disappointment in life is that I have wasted so many opportunities. I got opportunities that no other people got. He said, I got the opportunity to go to a great school. I got opportunities to study in good places. But pastor, I wasted every one of those opportunities. He said, today when I see my mother and my father broke, not just only emotionally, but financially also broke because of me. When I see them sad, first that's the bullet I can't bite. Because I am a man who got so many opportunities, but I've wasted every one of them. Maybe you're sitting here, you are one of those people. You got opportunity. You said yes at the beginning, but you wasted it. You got opportunity to work somewhere, but you never work well. And today you are regretting. Now if you're one of those people, you can live in that place called regret. Say, I wasted it. Or you can make a decision today saying, you know what? I'm going to change it. I'm going to change today. I'm going to change today. The third one under that I just underlined is some live in regret. Listen to this. Forgiving certain people opportunity. I met people in ministry. I met people in business who live in this place. They said, I am very upset that I gave this person opportunity. I tried to help, but these people really, you know, if you're one of those people that you're carrying hurt or disappointment, because of trying to help somebody and they did not make the most of it, my advice for you is don't live in that place. Don't live in that place. If people did not most of the opportunities you gave, you should not get disappointed. And may it not stop you or prevent you from extending an invitation to another. In my life and my ministry that God has called me, I've done this with many people. I wish if I can say everybody is flourishing. The truth of the matter is, it's not. I've helped many. But many have not taken the help and made most out of it. The fourth thing under that is a very important one. Some live in guilt as they hurt the person who trusted and gave them opportunity. Think about this. Take note. Some live in a place called guilt. You know why? Because somebody trusted them and gave them opportunity. But you did something that you should never do. You basically knife them. You betrayed them. You bad mouth them. You spoke evil. You gossiped about them. You go everywhere sharing terrible things about the very person who gave you opportunity. And I know there are people here right now, you're seated, and this word is ministering to you. 
I met a person a couple of weeks ago, Nikki. True story. He said, I don't want to come to church. I do not want to come to church. Because of this very reason. You are here and are living in regret hurt because you have failed somebody that who put their trust in you. Don't live in regret. Go and reconcile and make it right. Friends, we are living in a world where not too many people trust each other. And if somebody trusts you and gives you an opportunity, extends a helping hand to you, so I want to give you an opportunity. You better ask the Holy Spirit to give you strength not to hurt that person. Not to bad mouth that person. Because you will suffer with that. So as I'm going to teach in a few minutes time, I want to think of these four areas. And I want to learn from Jesus. How did Jesus, Jackie, operate in this? We've got to learn from who? From Jesus. Now listen to some of the things, okay? The reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. How Jesus extended invitation. Jesus was a master of extending invitation. And Jesus also responded to invitation. If you study the life of Jesus, you can see both of it. So in Mark chapter 1, we begin to read through it, we see that Jesus extending invitation. It was a very friendly invitation in that sense. In Mark chapter 1, verse 16, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew cast a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And here comes the invitation. What was the invitation? Come and follow me, said Jesus. Come and follow me, said Jesus. Jesus extending the invitation. The, uh, the invitation was very clear. What was the invitation about? Come and follow me. Now with this invitation, I wanted to see Leora, there was instructions. Come is the invitation. Follow me is the instruction. Come was the invitation. Within the invitation was a little bit of instruction. Instruction was follow me. He did not force it on them. But he extended the invitation and the invitation, he also gave some instructions. Even this morning, it's the same with all of us. Arian, he says, come, invitation. Then Lushanta, the next word is follow. What is the meaning of follow? Very simple. The instructions was, Come and study me. That is what Jesus was telling people. If you and I want to become fruitful, influential, successful, powerful, live meaningful lives, we must study the person called Jesus. That was the instructions. Come and study me. Come and get to know Strangers. And Gayan, he said, Come and follow me. He said, Come, come and study me. Get to know me. And at Bethany, we are extending that invitation to every one of you. Would you do that? It was a general invitation Jesus gave. That was a normal invitation. It is like an altar call. How many of you want to accept Jesus? Come. Yeah. Then with the altar call, we give you some instruction. Now see the levels of invitation. This was the first invitation. Invitation number two was a different type of invitation. In the book of Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 14, and Luke chapter 6, verse 12, is spoken about this. Jesus went up onto where? A mountain. Now, you know why Jesus went up the mountain? Not because he was a mountain climber. He went up the mountain because he wanted to spend some time in prayer. Now, check 
take note of the second invitation. The first invitation Jesus made Pastor Luke was not after prayer. Take note. Now, if you are very religious, you might get offended when you hear that. Jesus' Monday, the first invitation was not done after prayer. It was an open invitation. But the second invitation is a bit more serious invitation. The second invitation was not just come and follow me. It was going to be a different type of invitation. So the second invitation, the Bible clearly tells us, before he made this invitation, Jesus invested time in prayer. Why? What is different in the second invitation? The second invitation was for an appointment. For what? For an appointment. First one was an invitation to follow. The second invitation was an invitation for appointment. And what was this appointment all about? The first one, invitation, is just to follow. The second one is an appointment with some task in it. It was the invitation to serve. Look at Mark chapter 3 and listen to what it says in those Bible verses that we read. He appointed the twelve. See, after prayer. Invitation, now appointment after prayer. That they might be with him and that he might send them out to do what? To preach. Now those of you in the ministry, friendship groups, whatever ministry, take note what I'm saying very clearly. We give general invitations to everybody, say, come and hang around us. But to everybody that we say, come and hang around us, we don't appoint. Because appointment in the scripture is done after prayer. Appointment is different from invitation. Unfortunately, I have seen many people making this mistake. They appoint based on relationships. They appoint based on friendships. Appointment is not based on that. Appointment is supposed to be based after prayer. Boys and girls who want to get married... You speak to people like Sunet and them, and Lushanti, 17 years, 16 years married. Speak to people like Pastor Luke and Sister Ruth. Speak to people like Pastor Trevin and them. Speak to people like Pastor Akila and the family. Speak to people like Manju and Jesh and ask them, what did you do before you got married? You would hear most of them saying this statement, I pray. Oh, I got married. So then did you pray honestly? Yes. Yeah. You prayed. Because the, you don't want to get into this big time appointment without what? Prayer. You, that's how it happens. Appointment. Jesus appointed them and said, I'm appointing you. Unfortunately, many people... They think that appointment is out of relationship. Never, ever, ever. It's done after prayer. So Jesus appointed them to serve. If you have been appointed today in this church, you've been appointed for a task. And you must be very faithful for that appointment. I was speaking to the worship team this morning. One of them was speaking and they were saying about their commitment to the appointment. The, in, the singular worship team, more often or not, comes here 5.36 in the morning. Sometimes our Nero comes here. This young man is there. They come many times, Joe, 5.36 in the morning. That's the time they come. That's how they do they come every Saturday, I have seen. 12.30 to 3 o'clock. Is that correct, Jonah? 12.30 to 3 o'clock. Yeah. I'm sure sometimes when they come, they come for worship. They come to lead us. But when they come at 5.36 sometimes, they also have to carry the speakers and maybe sounds. 
You know why? Appointment. That is how it is. I want to encourage every one of you. If you've been appointed, please, don't fail that appointment. Jesus appointed them after prayer because he trusted them. I want to go a little bit more further. And as I go further, it's going to become a bit more close, touchy, challenging, impacting. Once again, in the Gospel of Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to 33, we see Jesus extending another invitation. I'm trying to help you here today, okay? Invitations give opportunity. So when Jesus went that day and prayed, Pastor Rosemary, and said, come here, I want to appoint you, they could have easily said, Jaden, thank you, Jesus, but we don't want to be appointed. We, we like the invitation. We don't like appointment because your appointment means we can't only follow you. Now we have to also be committed to serve you. Jesus, thank you for the invitation. We will follow We don't want any appointment because appointments require what? Serving. We are not ready to serve yet. So thank you, Jesus. You can keep the... But imagine if they did that. Who would ever know Peter? Who will ever know a Mark? Think what I'm saying. Who will ever know a Judas if they said no to the appointment? See, your life and your destiny is connected when you connect to the appointments of the Lord. And even today, at the end of this meeting, an invitation with the appointment will come. Sashi Taiso, you can respond. Or you can hear it. And just ignore it. Mark chapter 14, verse 32 to verse 33. I'm saying this is this, uh, Jesus extending uh, the third invitation. What does it say? They went to a place called Gethsemane. And Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. Listen to the instructions. Sit here while I pray. Then he took Peter, James, and John along with him. And he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. Now we read through the Gospels, you can see a few things in this, but I've studied these passages and I saw something very interesting in this. Not everybody in the twelve Sunet saw Jesus in this state. Not everybody. Actually, three people saw Jesus in this state. And their names are clear. Peter, James, and John. Now, the third invitation is a very important invitation. Now, listen to me very carefully. Jesus gave them an opportunity to see him closely in difficult times. He opened himself up, Manju, to three from the twelve to have a closer look at his life. There were nine a bit more in distance, but now there were three who got the opportunity to see him very closely. Let me ask the question, don't you think all twelve would have liked to see him? I'm sure they would have all liked to see him. But even though they like to see him, he did not give all of them the opportunity. He only gave it to three people. He gave them an opportunity, Arians and Innocent's mom, to see him very closely. Very important invitation. I'm going to go a bit deep with this invitation so that you understand the gravity of this invitation. Jesus gave them the opportunity to see him closely. In what times? In difficult times. Have you seen leaders? More often than not, leaders don't want lots of people to see them in what times? In difficult times. 
leaders don't want them their followers to see them in difficult time the question is then to whom does leaders give permission to see them in difficult time it's not to the ones who wants to be close to a leader bobby it is the one that the leader wants to be close to he said i want to give you an opportunity to look at me in my most difficult hours jesus gave them an opportunity to serve him in what hours in the most difficult hours he told them he had peter james and john I want to sit here boys and I want you to serve me. Peter James and John, you know that I'm God, don't you? Yeah, we know that you're God. How can we serve you? I want you to serve me because this is going to be the most difficult time of my life. Peter James and John, I want you to know that I trust you. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to serve me. in difficult time see you know catch what i'm saying here if a leader gives you an opportunity to get close to them and to serve them in difficult times it's a very rare opportunity that you will get my pastor watches me most of the time when i preach pastor kami i've seen many things in his life he had he has many people but one of the people that he opened the door to see him in his difficult times was me i know pastor kami's stories that nobody knows manju nobody knows I know stories about him nobody knows. But you know the stories I tell about him is all that he is a hero. But I know stories that nobody knows. You know why? Lushanti, he trusted me. He said I trust you to come and look at me very closely. I give you the opportunity to study me very closely, Bishan. Not to many have I given that. Bishan, I'm giving you the opportunity. And after that, I can stand here and say, almost, man, I'll tell you what. Thirty years knowing that man of God, serving the man of God. I can tell you, I have seen him in his difficult time, and I've only done, I've only served him. I only served him. Have you seen some things that we haven't seen? I've seen many things that you will never see in his life. I've seen it. But man, do you know why that is? Because he gave me the opportunity. There was a woman in the Bible, and her name is Miriam. Miriam is the sister of the great man called who? Moses. Because she was the sister of Moses. Moses gave her access into Moses's in a life. Who had access? Miriam had access. But guess what Miriam did? When she got access to Moses's in a life, she also saw certain things that she should not see. But who gave access? Moses gave her access. But when she saw get what she went and did, I said she tried to talk about it the bible says she was hit with a plague that nobody should be hit why because she misused the opportunity of a leader i can tell you this i have seen many people in the churches they misuse the opportunity they misuse the opportunity i am speaking today because i want you to be delivered set free and never to get back to that place again when a person gives you 
access to get close to you you must make a decision and say you know what i'm going to save god this person i'm going to save god this person i want to think what i'm saying very important biblical truth let it be said of you that you were never ever a betrayer a gossiper a talker behind talking about somebody who gave you an opportunity never let that happen please that's the worst thing you can do not to the a person to yourself you get what i'm saying if i talk about pastor kami it's actually not going to affect him manji is going to affect me that's how the scripture works it won't affect him it affects who it affect me it will affect my family it will affect my journey it won't affect him i pray that you will listen to the voice of the holy spirit today i pray that you will listen to the voice of the holy spirit today because every invitation that you get you must be in a place where you say i'm going to guard this I give invitations to the young boys to come and sit with me, talk with me. I was having chat with some of them yesterday um, at this teen camp, you know. And I just having a little bit of conversation. I said, "Man, I'm enjoying this." I said, "We should do this a bit more." And they said, "Yes, at least once a month can we do a two-hour chat with you?" I said, "Yeah, we, we must try to do that." Then I told them, "So then." and that the parent i said okay we can do this long as you will bring some good food then come if you bring good food i will sit with you for 2 hours and we'll have a good chat okay no food no chat because that's the way it works you know yeah. but that sort of a thing but when they get close to me guess what happens they get to see who i am they get to see who i am how i respond How I talk to people. Yeah. These two boys, they see me every Sunday. How I respond to people. They see me very closely. How does he respond? But in the same way, they get to see how I do life. Why? Because I give them permission. So I tell people like this. Some people, you talk to them out of the, at the gate. Some people, you invite them into the house. a few people you invite to your bedroom those are the people that you count very very close yeah. a few people only to the bedroom not everybody but if you are one of those people who have got opportunity from various leaders so let's say there is pastor dilani in front he has given you an opportunity Guess what? To be very close. Then you begin to see her life. You're going to see some things that others don't see about her. Because every person in this room, you have a few things that God desperately needs to touch. That's the truth about life. So some people really don't want people to get close also because of that. You know why? They say if I bring them too close, they, yeah. yeah, we understand that as well. See, some people don't have relationships in the church. Why? They say we don't want to talk too much. Why? Because if I talk too much, they will get to know who I am. I tell you what: if that's you today, you make a decision. I want to get close to people. I'm about to close. Cast in. a net of a big invitation that Jesus gave but i want to take note of the third invitation was the most important invitation not to everyone he gives that invitation brother allen davies not to everyone but he gave it to a few yeah 
I like Peter, though many of you don't like him. You know why? In spite of his stupidity, he was the only fellow Christian who was even willing to take a sword and cut the ear of a soldier because he thought somebody is coming to attack his leader. You may say how bad that is, but I would say that is loyalty. Loyalty expressed without revelation. So then he said, I'm going to cut your ear if you try to touch Jesus. Oh my God. He said, because Jesus told me, I'm going to be very close to him. Don't you try to touch my boss. I'll cut your ear. If I had to, I'll cut your legs. Don't you try to get close to my boss. Wow. I think we need a few Peters for every pastor. We need a few Peters for every apostle. I think we need a few Peters for every prophet because some of those Peters are desperately needed for pastors and leaders to keep moving forward. Yes. He said, don't come. I'll cut your ear off. Oh, right, 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 okay. See that? You got that? Yeah. But you're here and you're saying, but, but Pastor D, I have messed up. I have just done what I should not do. Today's the day that you get an opportunity. Here is a general invitation again, a wide net. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verse 28. He said, come. What did Jesus say? When I'm, I'm going to say, what did Jesus say? You're going to shout out the word come. Can you do that? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Come on, a little bit more louder. What did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? He said, come. He said, come. How many of you recognize it's another invitation? Come. But this invitation is not to follow. This is not for an appointment. This is not to serve the leader. This is a general invitation. Say, you come. Now why come? Because I have an answer for your problem. Come because I can resolve your matter. Come because I can take your shaky, unstable life and make it stable. Come. Because you are confused with life, you come and I will take away your confusion. Come because you are living in regret, you're living in shame. So you come so that I can erase all of that for you. Come because you are carrying unforgiveness, I can forgive you. Come because you are sick, because I can offer healing for you. Come because you are broke, I can begin to establish you to become prosperous so you can come. But take note, the word is, you have to come. Jesus never forces himself. The word come. Come. In a few minutes time, once again I'm going to say, I'm going to extend the invitation. You come. You come. But I want to take note the Bible gives us a little bit of instructions. Pastor Luke, how we should come. Not only come, but he gives us a little bit of instructions how we should come. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 11, I think, it gives us the instructions how we should come. Hebrews 11, 16. Okay, let's read Hebrews 11, 16. I think it's the wrong Bible verse somewhere. Somebody has a Bible. Hebrews 11, 16. Let me see. Those of you who come to the Lord must believe that He is. That's the Bible verse we're looking for. Hebrews 11, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, is it 6? Yeah, verse 6, please. Hebrews 11, Listen to what he says. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Take note. But without faith, 
it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God, take note, for he that cometh to God, the word come, to come into God, how must you come? You must believe that he is. You got to, how do you come? You got to believe that he is God and that he is a rewarder who begins to bless everybody who seeks after him. So the Bible not only says just come, but it also gives us a little bit of instructions how we should come. How must I come? I've got to believe, Jonathan, that he is who? God. I must believe as I come, he is able. I must come with that conviction. Geshan, no, no, what is I forget your name, son. I remember the first, he said the first day I came, correct me if I'm wrong, he said there was a message and he said if you want the purpose of life or whatever, come. So that day you said you came to the front. And he said, I heard the word, he said, Pastor Rosemary prayed for me. He said, Pastor Rosemary prayed for me. He said, and that day you felt something, correct? Yes. Now think about this. What would have happened if you did not come? What would have happened if you did not come? Would have God missed out on opportunity? Would have Pastor Rosemary missed out on the opportunity? Or would have you missed out? You would have missed out. Why? Because you said, I don't want to come. I am ashamed to come. What would others think if I go? You know, one of the biggest problems in church is this. In church, many times, you don't respond. You know why? Because you're afraid of what others will think of you. That's the truth, Lushanti. You're too concerned. What will others think about you? And many people lose their miracles, lose glorious opportunities because they're too much a concern what others would think about them. They miss out. They miss out. Jesus said, come. And the writer in the book of Hebrews tells us, whoever comes to Jesus must come believing. 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 It's an invitation. I added a few instructions there. So here we are. We're about to close now. And I'm about to give an invitation. Invitation number one was a general invitation. Come, follow me. If you have never made a decision to follow Jesus, I want to give you that invitation today. Would you follow Jesus? I don't need to talk much. You heard these kids' stories. In two months, because of following, his life has changed. The second invitation was very clear. An invitation where you begin to recognize, you know what? Uh, it comes with an appointment. You know that God has called you, but you're always running away from the call of God. You're not saying no to the appointments of Jesus. But today, maybe you want to respond to it and say, Jesus, I know that you have called me. And I want to respond to that. The third invitation is that you as a leader recognize as well you have maybe failed in the third invitation. Somebody gave you the opportunity to be very close but you have failed them. What do you do? It's an invitation to make things right that which you were doing wrong. I hope you hear me clearly. It's an invitation to make things right that which you have done wrong. Don't run away from it. Don't give excuses about it. Take responsibility for your action. And say, you know what? I messed up. That's all. I messed up. I messed up. I messed up. For those of you in leadership, 
Be careful who you get very close to yourself. Listen to me carefully. Not everybody who wants to you must bring them close to you. And I mean what I'm saying. I'm very careful about this. The closest for me is Stephanie girl, Deanne and Danica. That's my family. Then my mother, my sister, they're my closest. My brother, my nephews, Bill Johnson, Stefan, they're the closest. You know who gets to see me the most? They get to see me the most. Yeah. They get to see me the most. Leaders, be careful who you get. Some of you in this room, I've given you the opportunity to get a little more closer than others with me. But I'm watching you, how you respond to me. You may say, man, you know. I'm watching how you respond to me. If I, when I begin to see that you do not know how to handle my invitation, Lushanti, guess what I do? I choose to distance myself. Learn from me, all of you. If people do not know how to honor your invitation, take one step back. Distance yourself. Distance yourself. Distance yourself. It's okay. It's okay. That's fine. That's okay. If you do that, it will only help you. It's okay. I hope you're catching what the Spirit of the Lord is downloading to you. It's very important, very important. Of course, the fourth invitation is a general invitation. You need a touch from God. It's an invitation. Worship team, will you come together with me? The rest of the church, I want to stand up together with me. I want to stand up and I want to think right now. I want you to think. I want you to think. I want you to think. About these invitations we have been speaking. Is there anybody here this beautiful day? You have said, I want to respond to that first invitation, Pastor D. The invitation of come. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. It's the greatest decision you as an individual can make. The second one is you're here. You have heard many times God speak to you through various people regarding an appointment ministry. You have walked away from it. But you know it's you. Third invitation is you have misbehaved like Miriam. That's the third invitation. You have misbehaved like Miriam. You have broken the code of ethics. The third invitation is for you. It's an invitation to say, God, forgive me. It's an invitation for you to make things right. It's an invitation for you. The fourth invitation is a very general one. If you need anything from Jesus, he's offering it to you free of charge. I mean, as your eyes are closed and as you're thinking about it. Worship team leaders in the song. And after that, I will begin to lead a little bit in the altar call, okay? Pastor Luke, I want to come and stand with me, please. Draw me close to you. Oh, beautiful, yes.
believe this is what we need to do. I do not know for what you want to respond. Maybe you need to respond for all four. I don't know. Maybe it's two or three or one out of eight. I don't know. But if you are saying, uh-uh, I want to respond. And you want to make a declaration. What you're going to do is, I want you to leave your seat and come and find a place. And maybe kneel, maybe stand and lift your hands. One of the things that you begin to sense, so while the worship team is doing it, if you sense you want to respond to one of these kind of things, you come right now, find a place here and begin to get go deeper and deeper with Jesus. As the worship team keeps leading, if you feel and you come, thank you, Jesus. come is an opportunity. With every invitation comes an opportunity. Take notes. It's an opportunity. In a few minutes time, I ask to begin to pray. If you're here, maybe you're saying, I've wasted my opportunities. You want to turn things around? You come to the altar. So this is your moment. This is your moment. Come. It's an invitation loaded with opportunity for an individual to experience the love and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. So even as we begin to sing this song once more, if you're saying, you know what, Pastor D, I, I sense I need to respond. I need to respond. You don't fight with that. You don't fight with the conviction you are feeling. You give in to that conviction, please. You hear me? You give in to that conviction. You don't fight with it. You give in to it. Because that conviction is not from the evil one. It's from the Lord. So you come. So what we're going to do is as we begin to sing this, Begin to sense, I need, I need, I need. I'm just going to invite you. Come, just find a place, you know. You want to kneel, you want whatever it is. You come. This is your opportunity this morning. Amen. Draw me close to you. Draw me close to you. Oh, it's a God moment here.